What's going on guys? Today we're gonna to talk about how to properly set up your LLC. And I'm gonna go into some area that a lot of people don't really talk about because they haven't really started multiple businesses and set up LLCs. If you're coming here online, one of the things you would see is go to this website or go to that website, put in your information and file your LLC. And I'm here to tell you why that information can be extremely dangerous in the future. One of the things that you have to understand about developing business credit, when you go into a bank, they're going to do their due diligence. They're going to extremely your business before actually moving forward. So one of the things that you want to do is to make sure that your LLC is safe before you form it. And I'm about to explain to you some ways that you can do it. First of all, let's say you have a trucking company and you call it amostrucking.com or Amos Trucking Inc. or Amos Trucking LLC. The fact that you have put trucking in there is going to be a big red flag for a lot of big credit lenders. Now, this is one of the things that you can do in terms of, you can still start your trucking company. Let me explain the purview of the LLC language and explain how you can start a business that doesn't actually can drive or connect with what you put down. Let's say you're smart, you've been out there watching stuff, you've came to this channel, and you go ahead and form your LLC, and you want to be in the trucking, but you wouldn't call your LLC trucking, you would call it BG Capital LLC, or you would call it Brown Bear Capital or Brown Bear Enterprises. You would have a very wide ranging nomenclature and you would call it whatever and in the NCIS codes because every state when you go to form your LLC it's going to ask you what does your business do and this is where you run into problems in the future I'm going to explain something to you in a minute about what happened with one of my businesses and you can put let's see brown bear capital and in the NCS code, you could put consulting, business services, or whatever. Just put that there. And it's not going to damage you going forward in the real world. And I'll explain why. Years ago, when I started my holding company, it was supposed to be for real estate. And that is the NCS code that I picked was real estate. And that has become somewhat problematic and one of the things that I did is update my operating agreement to stay real estate and online courses which has worked so far I've gotten plenty of business credit cards and plenty of business lines of credit however what you're going to do is name your company very wide business name that is not specific to trucking real estate eight ATMs, credit, whatever. These are risky businesses. So you're gonna stay away from risky businesses. And let's go ahead and say you call your LLC Brown Bear Capital Enterprises. And you put general contracting under there, okay? And then you go out and you start a trucking company. Now, there's two parts to the trucking company. There's Brown Bear Capital, the LLC, which is the management component. And there's your DOT, your uh, enterprise, your trucking enterprise. Now your trucking enterprise is gonna have everything. It's gonna have your DOT number, it's gonna have your health insurance card, all that stuff. So for the world of trucking, you're gonna be 100% legit. Now, this is how you do it. You have Brown Bear Capital Enterprises as the management component of the business. Now, as a management component, you could get away with so many things and you will not title your business something that's prohibitive like anything that has to do with credit or cash is a red flag and it will get you in trouble there was a youtuber who put together a credit building course and he used stripe and i'm going to explain to you what stripe capital is stripe 
is an online payment processor and Stripe is gotten very aggressive. If you try to sell a course that deals with credit, finance, money, and what happened to this YouTuber was his course, they froze his account and they refunded everybody who bought his course their money back. This is one of the dangers. Now, I am a Stripe user, and since I know how Stripe operates, one of the things that I would do is put together something very general, very basic. I would never get into direct components because I know what they will do. And I have a few older Stripe accounts that I can plug into a new business. But essentially, knowing how these companies operate should be the methodology to teach you how to form your LLC. So your first LLC should be something very basic, very general, and it doesn't really matter if your LLC goes on to do something else. And I'll tell you a story in a minute. Years and years ago, with when I was selling commercial office furniture, I came across this company with a very strange name. It was something graphics, but they were selling commercial office furniture. And at the time I was really curious and I went and looked up their LLC and their LLC said something about office graphics, prints, and that type of stuff. And it said nothing about office furniture. And at the time I found this company, they had been selling office furniture for about 12 years. This is the beauty of business. You can start a business, name it one thing, get into the business world and say, oh no, we're not going to do that. We're going to do this. And that's perfectly 100% acceptable if, as long as you pay your taxes. There's no one that's going to come bing and hit you across your knees with a little hammer and saying, oh, you did something so bad. No, no one. This, this is one of the reasons I love the world of business because you can do so many things. But that should be your first situation with setting up your LLC. Now I'm gonna tell you what I do. I have my real estate holding company as the manager of my sub companies. Now, what is this? My holding company is the management segment of my LLCs. Now, the way I got it set up is I have a holding company and that's where I get my business credit because the holding company, the money flows up to the holding company. So that's where I go ahead and get most of my business credit because essentially none of my smaller companies really need business credit. And if I need to use business credit, I have it at the holding company level and I can use it for any of those businesses. And because now I know that may sound a little confusing because you're like, all right, you got this holding company and you have this other company but you're gonna use the business credit at the holding company level for this company that's at an operating level. Isn't that somewhat confusing and will that get you in trouble? I'm gonna to explain to you why it's not. It may sound confusing, but why it's not confusing and why I'm not gonna get in trouble. I have the holding company, right? And then I have these multiple operating companies and I get a 1099 for the operating companies from doing business, but guess what? At the end of the year, where am I going to file my taxes? I'm going to take all of those sub companies and stack them up in the holding company and file my taxes at the holding company level. So that's one of the reasons that my business credit is at the holding company level because that's where all the money goes and that's where I file my taxes. And it's real simple. When you have a holding company and you have and it's pretty elegant the way that the Internal Revenue Service has it set up because there's a form that you file with your taxes stating what company does your holding companies own and what percentage. Do they own 25%? Do they own 100%? Do they own 10%? No. So you put all of this in your tax documents. So you put this sub company, you put your, L, your EIN, and that lets the Internal Revenue Service knows that this company, which has an EIN, which has a business bank account, operates under the cloaking of the holding company. And that's one of the things that I do to get around setting up multiple businesses and then worrying about, hey, because once again, my strategy is to get all of my business credit 
at the holding company level and I've already gone through that because once again there are many challenges and tribulations that you have to go through when you're setting up your business credit when you're setting up your stuff so for me because I have a holding company and be sure to subscribe be sure to hit the bell notification button and be sure to watch all of these videos at least three to five times because I am going to come up with some holding company strategies for you guys and you want to be subscribed you want to stay tuned so you can get that information and for me the holding company thing works much better than me having a very vague very general business name because I'm not getting started but for you and you're getting started and there's a lot of questions about should I start a holding company or should I start my child LLC or a baby corpse and I'm about to break it down to you. It really depends upon you and your money. I'm gonna give you two examples. Let's say you're a regular hardworking American and you make 35,000 a year. You don't have a lot of extra money after you pay bills, your mortgage, you buy food, you buy gas. There's not a lot of extra money. For you, I would suggest that you create your first LLC with a solid, very, safe business name and pick general accounting, pick management, pick something very safe. Now, let's say you are a hardworking person, but you make 100,000 a year and you have disposable income where you could go ahead and set up your holding company and then you can set up your operating companies. I would suggest that you do that because more than it, the cost of setting up a holding company, the cost of setting up an operating company, in my opinion, is extremely cheap. We're talking less than, what, 150, depending, unless you're in the state of New York or the state of California where setting up LLCs is very expensive. Pretty much the other 48 states, it's not that expensive. It's pretty easy to set up. Just depends upon where you are with your money and your system. And it's only like, in the state of Georgia, $75. I don't know what it is in other states, but it's not that expensive to keep a holding company or operating company or standards company set up. It's not really expensive, but this is one of the reasons that for setting up an LLC, and I'll be talking about this in future videos, that you need to have, if you don't know exactly what you're gonna be doing, setting up a vague, very broad business term LLC is the safest way to ensure that once you're up and running, once your business is going, that you can now go out and get business credit in that LLC name without a lot of issues. Because literally, I have been asked time and time again about, all right, I understand this LLC is the company that you're going for business credit, but in the NSS codes it says real estate, and but you're telling me you're doing online courses. I've had that conversation numerous times. And because I'm used to talking business and talking to bankers, I know a way to tell them is, yeah, that was our primary business, but what we have found out is online courses is more sustainable and durable. You have to speak in a way that makes the banker go, oh, this is good. Oh, this is safe. Oh, this is the way we should go. That's how you have to speak to them. If you're just like, I don't know, you can find yourself blocked or you can find yourself denied when you're going to apply for business credit. This is the thing. Now, so many people just go to these websites and set up an LLC with no real ideal of what they're doing. In some cases, they'll pick maybe Amy's articles or Amy's yarn or something like that, which is relatively safe and is not going to pose any problems in the future. But someone will go out and call it big dog trucking and you will find yourself in a world of such a strangeness when it comes in terms of getting business credit. There's a lot of net 30s that you can get for a trucking company but you will find out they're getting valid business credit. And what is valid business credit? That's your LLC, that's your line of credit, and it, your business loans. You will find that stuff's a little trickier. It's a little trickier when you don't have the right nomenclature and the right setup for your LLC. You will find it can be very tricky. It can be threatening. You'll have banks will tell you, we're not gonna give you any money because you're in this business. Once again, 
money handling, credit fixing, anything that has to do with cash is a red flag. Even if your business is something that you're gonna do with cash. I would name it something very simple, very broad pick. Management companies are very safe in IC code and then go out and do what I want to do. Because if you don't know this, and essentially when you go ahead and you set up your LLC, you don't know this. And it doesn't become a problem until later when you're out there trying to establish and build some business credit or get into certain contracts or getting, you will find that you will not be able to do any of this stuff because you are not in a position to understand what you did when you set up your, you don't understand what you did when you set up your LLC. So just some guidance and some points. So what I want you to do is subscribe to the channel. I want you to hit the bell notification button and I want you to like this video. And I want you to come back and watch these videos multiple times because this is gonna give you the business information that you will need to make your business successful and to set you up on the proper path of business success. My name is Glendon Cameron. I'm here to help you be successful. I'm here to help you win. So go ahead, subscribe, hit the bell notification, like this video, and I will see you in the next one.